Hello and welcome to Projector, and on this episode, Jessica Chastain's assassin discovers what she would really kill for in the action thriller Ava. Ava, played by Jessica Chastain, is a black ops assassin, mentored by a handler Duke, played by John Malkovich, who she served under in the military. After her mother Bobby, played by Gina Davis, has a heart attack, Ava returns home to Boston to visit her sister Judy, played by Jess Wexler, and her fiancé Michael, played by Common, who Ava left behind eight years ago. When one of Ava's missions in Saudi Arabia goes wrong, Duke's superior Simon, played by Colin Farrell, believes she's a liability and tries to have Ava killed. Ava is the latest film to be released as a premium VOD rental in the UK, costing £13.99 to rent at the time of this review, which I can't help but feel is a little bit cheeky, considering that this was very likely not going to be a theatrical release, COVID or not, considering it's being put out by a small label like Vertical Entertainment, an indie who don't normally get a lot of big names in their fare, and when they do, it's usually for a very good reason. Ava did stir up some controversy back in 2018 with its original choice of direct, the film was set to be held by Australian actor-turned-director Matthew Newton, who wrote the screenplay and is still credited as such on the final film, but he stepped away from the project after his history of domestic violence re-emerged, which was quite embarrassing for the film, and especially producer Jessica Chastain, who was an outspoken advocate of the Time's Up movement. In Newton's place, Chastain hired Tate Taylor, who previously worked with her on The Help, and Taylor is very much a journeyman director who's credited credits are as wide-ranging as The Girl on the Train and Ma. The film was actually shot under the original title of Eve, and that means that during post-production, they had to loop an ADR all the usage of the title character's name. I presume the reason for this is less to disassociate it from the controversy about the original director and more probably because of Killing Eve, and that they didn't want people to confuse the two. But honestly, in the case of Ava, they probably should have just kept the original name, because more people would have seen it this way. At first glance, Ava is another example in a recent spate of female action heroes, especially spies and assassins. I'm thinking of the likes of Atomic Blonde, Red Sparrow, or Luc Besson's Anna, and it is one of those things but it's also melodrama at the same time, and that genuinely caught me off guard because I was expecting it to be a lot more of a straightforward action movie. So yes, Ava is set in the high-stakes, dangerous world of espionage, all the disguises and wigs that come with it, but it's also simultaneously set in the mundane, everyday world that's almost domestic at times. You really get to see this with the antagonist Simon in particular, who conducts a lot of his nefarious dirty dealings while called away from things like a family christening or setting up dinner in the garden. That banality of evil idea is definitely not an original thought for these kind of movies, but even so, it definitely sets it apart from those other examples which are just strictly genre exercises, whereas Ava clearly wants to be more character-based at times. And Ava is someone that can go from, in one scene, being at this high-class party wearing this stunning bright red dress, and then in the next scene, walk into a hotel, dressed down, wearing a t-shirt for the misfits, looking like someone you just passed by on the street. And that was interesting to me, because it grounded the idea of assassins in a way that I don't normally see in these kind of movies. It feels strangely plausible in this outing. And in that way, you can understand why someone like Jessica Chastain would choose a role like this for themselves. It's because it has such a wide range. Yes, she does get to do all the action stuff and beat people up, but there's a lot of character stuff at the same time. And in that way, Ava is another one of those characters that Chastain likes to play. Someone that is quite cold and detached, but their humanity is starting to slip from under that mask. Ava is the rare assassin that likes to chat with her victims. She likes to talk with them to try and work out why they were selected in the first place as targets, almost like she's trying to assess her own morality. It's clear that Ava is searching for some kind of purpose. She's someone that has chosen her vocation as an assassin because it suits her very well. She's clearly someone that is trying to evade her past as much as possible. So a job which requires her to go from place to place to place and share different identities each time, all the while making very few emotional attachments, 
is perfectly suited for her, but now she's in a position where she has to go back to her hometown of Boston and confront the person of who she was, and to some extent, still is. There is something quite self-destructive about Ava, and this is most clearly seen in the way that she's an addict. She's an alcoholic, she attends AA meetings, and over the course of the film, she has to fight those urges, especially at her lowest point. And that gives Chastain something to act with. There are big emotional moments in her performance, especially in the second half of the film, and they're very well done but they also feel somewhat misplaced overall. It doesn't feel like it particularly sits very well with the rest of the film. And this is the main problem with Ava, in that it feels like two different movies and they're both not especially good. So on the one hand, you have this homecoming drama. Ava is going back to all these people that she's not seen in eight years, and they've not heard anything from her in that time either. They don't know she's an assassin. She keeps that a secret. So she meets up with her sister, played by Jess Wexler, who's in a band, and Common, who is Wexler's fiance, who previously had a thing for Ava before she left. But she also has to confront her headstrong mother, played by Gina Davis. Davis obviously is one of the best parts of this movie. It's an all too rare screen appearance from her and she's fantastic even though she has only about four scenes worth but she steals every moment of them. It's clear in her brief appearances why Ava left the first time because she is such an overbearing domineering presence that tramples over Ava's self-esteem even as a world-class assassin. And in that way, you get a sense that there was a particularly turbulent home life of which there was. And the last scene that Davis and Chastain have together is easily one of the best acted in the entire film. I also like the fact that Davis is even in this movie in the first place because obviously her casting is a very cheeky nod to her previous role as an assassin in The Long Kiss Goodnight, which is a nice, playful touch. But honestly, it does feel like Davis is acting in a much better movie than this one, to be honest. The problem with all this drama is that it's very clear that the movie isn't really invested in it, especially in the fact that characters and ideas just tend to get left by the wayside a lot of the time. For example, Wexler, as Ava's sister, disappears for a large chunk of the second half of the movie. The relationship between Ava and Michael falls completely flat. First of all, Chastain and Common have no chemistry with each other whatsoever, and also, we don't really buy that they're rekindling their romance. It all seems very awkward and fumbled, and especially because Michael just seems like a bit of a deadbeat, to be honest, especially when it's revealed that he's got huge gambling debts. Again, going back to the theme of addicts, it feels like the only reason that these two are even attracted to each other is because they've got vices of different kinds. And the subplot about Ava coming to Michael's rescue from a gambling ring run by Joan Chen out in an abandoned church feels completely extraneous. It feels like it's only here to add more action scenes into that side of the movie and doesn't feel remotely tethered to anything else going on. This is the problem overall, is that it's clear that from the construction of the movie, it's been very second-guessed. It's clear that at one point it was going to be more character-based, but then the decision was made to make it more action-y because clearly the original version of the film dragged out too long. And so what ends up happening is that we've got this very overcut, very disjointed edit that seems to have dropped scenes at random to try and bulk up the pacing and really put the action side of the movie to the forefront because that's what the producers wanted, but unfortunately it just makes the movie feel slower because it has no sense of flow or rhythm to it. The movie never finds any kind of consistent tone and it just feels incoherent and dull and it isn't helped by the fact the action side of the equation is by far the weakest aspects of the film. We've seen so many movies over the years about assassins betrayed by their employers and Ava hits every single cliche of them, right down to the casting of John Malkovich as her handler. It's clear there's meant to be a 
her father-daughter dynamics there. She's obviously got a lot of daddy issues and uses him as a surrogate, but even with that and the casting of Malkovich and Chastain in these roles, they still can't elevate them above what they actually are, which is largely expositional. And Malkovich has done far too many roles in movies like this where he uses signature laconic delivery to try and essentially polish up very, very dry dialogue. Is he reciting the lines in Ava, or is he reciting the lines from Unlocked, the Nui Repass movie that I reviewed several years ago that is another example of female action heroes recently? I mean, it could just be the same dialogue, and I genuinely think I wouldn't have noticed. At least Malkovich does slightly stand out in this movie because they give him an action sequence at one point. I wouldn't say that most of that is Malkovich as much as his stunt double, but even so, that sets the role apart slightly from other examples of this. Easily the worst part of the movie is Colin Farrell's villain Simon, who is really ineffectual and doesn't make much sense. He dislikes Ava purely for the fact that she talks with her targets, which, you know, might actually make sense if he had something to hide, like, oh, he's sending her after the wrong targets because he's got a scheme of his own. That would be called a motivation. Instead, the movie offers none of the sort, so instead it becomes like this weirdly petty grudge on his part, almost like the assassin equivalent of inter-office politics. You just spend the movie going, he's really going to kill her for that? Who cares if she chats with the targets beforehand? She still goes on to kill them anyway. It really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. So it just ends up removing any kind of stakes. Why are we supposed to be invested in any of this? And Fowl's villain just comes across as an incompetent nitwit. And it's a real shame because Fowl is trying here, but really this part just makes him look like an idiot and it's just simply embarrassing. Even for all of its foes, a film like Ava could have at least partially redeemed itself by the quality of its action scenes, but even here it falls short. This is the problem with hiring someone like Tate Taylor to direct your movie, someone who clearly doesn't have much connection to the material, especially as someone who was hired at the 11th hour. And the action scenes in this are largely perfunctory at best. They're not terrible by any means, they're just the standard Hollywood fight scenes with all the flaws that entails. Namely, they've got too many cuts in them, they lack any kind of weight and heft because of it. There's only a couple of sequences that really stand out. The final fight scene between Farrell and Chastain in a hotel room is suitably brutal and crunchy and really rough. There's a nice moment where Chastain bursts out of a fountain to stab an assassin in the neck. The botched mission in Saudi Arabia is also quite well handled. But otherwise, it just feels like a very weak attempt to impersonate the style of John Wick that has become so popular over the years. In fact, that literally happens because the confrontation between Chastain and Joan Chen happens in the abandoned church that has been converted into a nightclub with purple lighting, which directly evokes a sequence in John Wick, and boy, does it not stand up to that comparison, let me tell you. And as such... The action scenes here, they're fine, but they're simply not good enough, in my opinion. If you're going to do this kind of movie, you need to have really great action, because that is where the bar is set in the genre at the moment. It's clear that they're placing more emphasis on stunt performers and having the actors do their own stunts, and Ava feels more like a relic of the films that came before John Wick came out. And not helping this is the fact that it feels weirdly cheap despite all the A-list talent involved, especially when it comes to the CG effects. There are really conspicuous smoke and blood effects, and the view out of Ava's hotel window looks like it's genuinely unfinished. The tone is really set in the opening sequence where Ava shoots through a car window in a very obvious CG shot, but then they forget to apply the effect to when she steps outside of the car. Yeah, good continuity there. That's emblematic of the sloppiness throughout this entire production, and name value can only bring so much to a movie. Instead, it feels like a production 
where no one was really giving it their all aside from Chastain and then the film ends on this third act that is incredibly unsatisfying and peters out when it should be at the height of its climax. It's clear that Ava wanted to be more than just your average action movie but that's where it falls apart. The script is nowhere near good enough, it just takes the cliches of both the action genre and dramas and puts them into this unpalatable mess that never gels together. Ava will unsatisfy both people looking for a serious character based drama and action fans at the same time. In particular, the fight sequences are nowhere near good enough for what we expect of the genre these days. And if you're looking for that kind of movie, again, I'd like to point you towards the likes of Atomic Blonde or Red Sparrow, both of which feel much more coherent than this does. This is badly edited and leaves most of its very, very talented cast high and dry, with maybe the sole exception of Chastain, but even her abilities can't salvage this film. Honestly though, if you're looking for a movie where an assassin goes back to their hometown, just watch Gross Point Blank instead. It's way better than this. And did I mention it's a comedy? Ava tries to split the difference between an action movie and a character-based drama, but ends up botching its assignment. Although it puts espionage next to domestic melodrama, which sets it apart from the usual betrayed by their employer plot, both the drama and thriller sides are underserved by the end result, with the film suffering particularly badly from a clumsy 90-minute edit that tries to put action at the forefront, even though that part of the plot is the most generic, uninteresting side of the film. Jessica Chastain convinces the cool assassin fraying around the edges, but it feels like she's trying to add misplaced gravitas to what should be B-movie fodder, with the ludicrously overqualified likes of Colin Farrell, Gina Davis and John Malkovich all struggling to elevate the material. Even the action sequences can't save Ava, being overcut attempts to follow the John Wick style and a poor file act leaves us feeling like an unsatisfying misfire. If you like this review then set your sights over at my Patreon where you can see my reviews early among other perks including access to my Discord server, but until next time I'm Matthew Buck, fading out.